Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mike Missinelli Podcast. It is Wednesday, October 18th, and uh, it is time for a recap of Game 2. And, uh, you know, excuse me if I'm going to be snarky and obnoxious in this particular podcast, but to me, it deserves it. Of course, the Mike Missinelli Podcast is brought to you by Bet Rivers. Don't forget to uh, download your Bet Rivers app. I have placed a baseball bet. I've rarely placed a baseball bet. I placed a baseball bet today on the Houston Astros. Now, we'll talk about that a little later. But let's talk about last night. The series is over, okay? And uh, if you have listened to this podcast, you heard that the series was going to be over really quickly. In fact, uh, before it even started, I said this is likely a sweep and at most five games. I don't believe that the Arizona Diamondbacks will now win a game. They are thoroughly mismatched and thoroughly outclassed in this series and it is evident in the first two games now this was a spunky team real good and nice you know they won some short series games in the playoffs they were an 84 win team trying to come into big bad philadelphia and do what beat this team i thought from the jump that the series was a mismatch and this is what it's turning out to be uh i'm watching the game last night and the way it just unraveled for the diamondbacks and I started to think about spring training when a college baseball team tries to play against a professional baseball team. And, you know, they hang in there for a while. It's a cute story. But eventually their pitchers are going to get racked by major league hitters. And that's the way I saw it last night. So let, let's, go, uh, let's go back to the start of this game. First of all, for the people who were at this game, and I was at the game last night, and producer Darren, who you'll hear from in a second, was was there last night it was a total mess in philadelphia that you need to go to second level thinking in case this happens again there is no way you should try to drive into that area when there's a concentration of 140,000 people ascending on the same area including 55,000 soccer fans all right so i did the smart thing i parked on broad street i hopped on the broad street line i took the subway in boom boom no problem at all People were stranded on the highway trying to get to this game to the point where they couldn't even see the game. And I feel bad for those people. They shut down the ramps from I-95 because of the crowd from the airport to the stadium. It was lined up back to wall to wall. It was absolutely ridiculous. But I, but I get off the subject here. Um, I, I'm watching this game from the jump. And, and if you have heard the podcast and you've followed my tweets – you know that I've said this. The only way the Arizona Diamondbacks can hope to be competitive is to use what they do best. They don't do many things best, but what they do is they run. They're a fast team. They steal a lot of bases. They sacrifice. They get from first to third, the whole bit. So in two straight games, Corbin Carroll, not that he hit line drive smashes, he gets on base Two games in a row with broken bad hits. Now, where on earth do you not try to steal a base there? It's the only chance you have. It's the only strength you have. You've got a guy who has stole 54 stolen bases, and against Wheeler, he doesn't steal. And against Nola last night, he doesn't steal. And I don't want to hear this crap about Aaron Nola changing his delivery to a slide step. It's like a casino uh, where... uh, Joe Pesci said, what, the first hole I ever dug? What's the first base I ever stole with with a slide step? The guy had 54 stolen bases. The reason why he does not steal is because he's scared to death. And when you come into a series in Philadelphia and you play scared, it's going to end up the same way you saw it end up last night. You got to go, okay, well, this is what we do. Even if I get thrown out, I'm showing aggression. We got nothing to lose here. So if I get thrown out, so big deal. I'm sending a message to the other team that we're at least going to try to do what we do best. So that was the first tip-off last night that they were going to get their ass beat. Now, Merrill Kelly, to his credit, pitches a good game. Uh, And he had given up three hits as we get to the fifth, and three of them were home runs. Uh, But the problem is that when you give up a home run against this team, and the crowd gets into it, and right away, you get, as they say in hockey, behind the eight ball, and you go, oh, no, and it's an oh, no feeling, because the crowd is now into it, and what happens, bang, bang, Schwarber twice, it's three, nothing, and then, and then they open it up later 
which which became silly, frankly, in, in a National League Championship Series for that Arizona Diamondback team to get whomped ten to nothing is really kind of embarrassing. The ultimate embarrassment crystallizing in a pop fly that nobody catches on the infield. They're done. There is no way that this team can even win a game going back to Arizona. They're pitching a, a raw kid tonight, fought uh, a right-handed pitcher, uh, and uh, like they have no idea how he's going to pitch. Or, or uh, do you see that guy beating this lineup? If Gallon and Merrill Kelly couldn't beat this lineup, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. Now we're going to go over this game chapter and verse. But Darren, uh, you were at the game last night. Your thoughts on what I just said about this series being over? Uh, totally agree. That That's a team that just looks – it is a – we talked about this yesterday. This team rips the – this Phillies team rips the hearts out of its opponents in the postseason. You can't let the Phillies jump on you early. If they do, it's like all the magma gets poured out from the volcano into the, into the town below and everybody just starts going crazy, and it's a lot to overcome. And I also want to comment on what an absolute – I got into this thing. I got down there early yesterday. Um, but getting home last night, leaving, and I had a good yeah, – I was right near the edge of the, the, the Jet Row parking lot because everything was filtered wide. You couldn't get up the normal arteries to get home. It was an absolute five-alarm disaster. I, I mean, it was hours in the car just sitting there. It was awful. Well, that's the perils of living in Jersey. Uh, where, you know, unless you take the high speed yeah, line in, and, you know, it's, it's foolish and you got to think ahead. And I had no problems walking to the subway. Uh, the subway was packed with Mexican soccer fans, which uh, I found really interesting that the fact that they collided that game with a friendly that was going to get 55,000 people plus a Flyers game is going to get another 18,000 people. It's just bad planning. But if you have bad planning, you can't blame the people for planning the games. You blame yourself for not adapting to what was going to go on down there. All right, so just a little tidbit before we break this game down. Um, okay, let's let's break it in, in the course of breaking this game down because let, let's go uh, to the sixth inning, which is where it all unravels. For the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, I am sitting in section 127. Took my daughter, Kira, and uh, my new son-in-law, Tom, down to the game last night. And uh, in the section right next to me are three rows of Arizona Diamondbacks people. They've got Arizona Diamondbacks stuff on. And I see uh, what looks like the parents of a player. And I look at the back of the jersey, and it says Mantiply. So obviously it is the family of Arizona Diamondbacks relief pitcher Joe Mantiply who comes in the game in the sixth inning, okay? We get to sixth inning. Schwarber hits the home run, a mash job to make it 3 nothing. Turner walks. They get Harper. I don't know how they, they – Kelly strikes out Harper. And Bone pops to the shortstop. And now uh, here comes Stott. Uh, now, normally – you know, Stott, left, you want lefty on lefty, more dangerous hitter than Stott, you make the move. But uh, Tori uh, Lovello uh, takes, uh, ma brings Matt to play in to face uh, Stott. Um, Stott singles the center, gets a uh, uh, turner to third, he steals second, and here's the big blow. Real Muto doubles the left center, knocks in two. They intentionally walk Castellanos, and then Marsh, off the left-hander, flips one down the left field line and two more score, and it's 6 nothing. and the game is over, and Mantiply has given up four runs on four hits. And I got to be honest with you, I looked over at his family because it's obviously it's his mom and dad and probably his wife with a little toddler kid, and their heart just sunk. And I, I felt really, I felt this remorse for them. I'm looking over, and I'm going, oh, my God. And I look up his his uh, his bio. He's from Virginia. So, obviously, they made the trek from Virginia to see him because he plays in Arizona. Probably they don't have a lot of chances to see him. They drive up to Philadelphia, and that's what happens. And they get smashed. He gets smashed, and they get smashed. And for all intents and purposes, the game is over until we go to the bottom of the seventh, where Alec Bohm, who had hit a couple balls hard in the series but hadn't been able to get anything to drop. He did hit a long fly ball of the wall earlier in the game. Uh, he makes a nice swing and doubles to left center, and he drives in Harper and Schwarber and then Real Muto again. 
to make it uh, nine to nothing. And then the sacrifice fly ends the scoring to make it 10 to nothing. So uh, it's just some facts and figures on this game because Wheeler and Nola have been fantastic. And this uh, gets into a really interesting conversation about what they're going to have to do with Nola. And at this point, Nola has really hit the jackpot. He he, he has made uh, the, the Phillies. They can't now turn away from him. So it's just a matter of, of what he, what he's going to settle for. Now, on the open market right now, he's probably uh, worth about $40 million a year because this is what the going rate is for starting pitchers. He's 30 years old. You could probably sign him. He probably can get a six-year contract at this point. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to be able to do. But he has solidified – um, what the, what the uh, what his value is uh, for for uh, the Phillies going forward, and they now can't turn away from him. They're uh, they're they're caught right here. So uh, let me give you some um, let me give you some facts and figures here. Uh, Aaron Nola, uh, postseason numbers: he's three and zero, eighteen point two innings pitched. He's given up twelve hits, two runs, two earned runs, two walks. 19 Ks to two walks. He has a 0.96 ERA and a 0.75 whip, which is walks and hits uh, per inning pitched. Uh, Wheeler, 2-0, and 19 innings pitched, 11 hits, five earned runs, one walk, 26 Ks, 2.37 and a 0.632 whip. Not only that, but they're going to get Ranger Suarez, who's playoff tested in game three, against a really raw right-hander. Uh, if this is not a sweep, I don't know crap about baseball. This team is dead and buried, and they play like they're dead and buried. They play like they're scared, and it's been a nice welcome party for them to get into the playoffs. But this is like, son, go home. You ain't ready for this game. Like, this pickup game is too much for you at this point. Go down go down the other end of the court and play with the schlubs, and then maybe one day you can get to the main court. All right, so there you go. Now, um, the Phillies have outscored their opponents in the postseason 46 to 14. They have out homered them 19 to 3. They have hit 13 straight solo shots. And again, in the playoffs, when you can put a run on the board without doing anything else but circling the bases. That really hurts the team. It, 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 believe me when I tell you that when you get up on a team by hitting solo home runs, you go, oh, my God. And you don't know what to do. And the, I'm, the Diamondbacks are, are just scared to death. And for the people that think I'm discrediting them, I'm not discrediting them. From, from the jump, if you look at both these lineups, the Diamondbacks don't belong in the same field with the Phillies. And I'm, I'm looking at their lineup last night. All right, Now, Christian Walker hasn't hit a loud foul in this series, but their number three hitter is Tommy Pham. Now this is the ultimate journeyman outfielder and he's got to hit three in that lineup. And that's really all you need to know. Unless Corbin Carroll is getting on base, stealing second, stealing third, they don't have a chance to score against this good pitching. All right. I'm going to put my Phillies hat on right now. Go ahead, Darren. What do you got to say? Put the Phil's hat on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a fan. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm just, I, I, no, I love domination and I love examining baseball. And from every angle, last they, they have turned this Arizona team has turned Alec Bowman to Brooks Robinson. Yeah, they. they I mean, they're, they're the making horses. every play. They're they're making every pitch. Nola was masterful last night. They had no idea what he was throwing at them. It all came out of the same arm slot. It looks like it's going to be a strike. It's not a strike. It curls away. He's got you know his sinker, his his curveball, his fastball was spotted. You have no chance if you're if, unless you're a good hitting team, and that's not a good hitting team that was trying to beat the Phillies last night. No, and they have no power, and you can't beat the Phillies without power. You have to have some long ball hitters. They don't have any. They're a small ball team. And they do it well, but you can't beat the Phillies just playing small ball at the top of the order. No. So, so where are we now? We're waiting for a World Series. Frankly, that's what you got to do. You got to wait for a World Series. You got to look at the series that's in the American League and try to do your own scouting report on who you think would be a better opponent. And I think Texas is going to win this. I like Houston. In fact, I, I bet Houston on my Bet Rivers app right before this show. 
because I don't think Max Scherzer is going to – he hasn't pitched in a long time. He's over-amped. I don't think he's going to find the strike zone early. If there's one game Houston's going to win, I think it's going to be this game. But I think overall the Texas Rangers win the series, and the Texas Rangers aren't the Phillies. They're a good team. They're a solid team, and they'll make it more competitive than the Arizona Diamondbacks. I cannot see the Phillies losing this year's World Series. I just can't see it. Uh, the one thing that's guaranteed, they're going to be there, okay? Because <laughs> there's no way that it is possible for them to lose this series against this inferior team. No, I totally agree. There's no way they lose this series. You know, I'm not one to go get ahead of myself. I don't want to really think about the World Series just yet. I kind of want Houston to win because I'd like to see them face the Astros again. Uh, Fromber isn't what he was last year. I think they're very beatable this year. That whole team's not what they were last year. Yeah. They're, they're missing something. Yeah, they are. And, and so I kind of wouldn't mind another crack at the Houston Astros. Texas scares me a little bit. Bochy's a really good manager. Uh, but, I, you know, you got to get there first. But I think they're, I don't think that we're going to have a problem. I don't think they're going to be playing any more games in Philly in the NLCS. Yeah. Uh, in any event, you know, there, I, I, I live tweet this game as I'm at, in the ballpark. Um, so, uh, I was going to, to go over uh, the, the first one that I tweeted, which was exactly 16 hours ago when, when Carroll got on base with a broken bat hit. Interesting. Only chance D-backs have is the run. Carroll has 54 stolen bases, and two games in a row he doesn't run? That's playing scared. All right? That was what I tweeted the first, the first batter of the game, and it played out because they played scared. They they went they had an approach where they didn't believe they could hit Nola. You could just see that they had no idea what they were doing up there. They weren't aggressive. They didn't attack anything. They didn't get him counts where where they could do something with a pitch. They were flailing at, at Nola the whole night. That's a team that has absolutely no confidence. I tweeted out Christian Walker all confused. He was. He didn't know what was coming at him. He he's taking strikes. He's swinging at pitches that are high. Uh, and then there was one part where I actually Turner got on first base for the Phillies and um, Merrill Kelly had engaged, disengaged twice. You remember this? And, and I'm going, why doesn't Turner steal here? Like, I, I don't understand why Turner doesn't steal in that, in that, but this is a small matter. This is early in the game when, when the outcome was still in a little uh, doubt, but I just didn't understand why at that point, after Kelly had thrown over twice, why Turner doesn't steal. And I know they're saying, well, Harper's up and the, and the whole bit, and you want to you want to leave the hole open. I mean, Harper can handle himself. <laughs> you don't have to help Harper out anymore. How about if you hop Harper this way? You steal a bag because they're not going to throw you out, and a Harper singles you home. How about that one? I'll take the run. I'll take the run every time there. Yeah, I would have uh, stolen. Then, I would have stolen. So you got to be aggressive. Yeah, and then, and then finally, when Mantiply, uh, Mantiply blew up, I tweeted, I feel bad. Mantiply's family, mom, dad, wife, and kid are sitting in seats right near me. Oh, well. <laughs> and, and that was the end. All right. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what more we can add to this whole thing. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, at Arizona. Um, I brought up an Arizona uh, reporter's coverage of the game last night. Uh, he writes for the Arizona Republic. Uh, and here was his lead because – and I'll, I'll give them credit. The, the the writers are kind of, you know, destroying their own squad out there. Diamondbacks did not so much lose on Tuesday night as they were flattened. They were outpitched and out hit and might have been outmanaged. They let an infield fly drop. They also forgot how many outs there were. That's when uh, Guriel caught the fly ball. They arrived here riding high. They headed home in need of a reset. The Diamondbacks were demolished 10 0 by the Philadelphia Phillies in game two of the National League Championship Series. In two days here, they sent their two best starters to the mound and watched them serve up a combined six home runs. The Diamondbacks faced the Phillies' two best and were shut down. Whether it was the intimidating atmosphere of Citizens Bank Park or the fact that they were facing a well rounded powerhouse for the first time this postseason, the Diamondbacks this, these past two days have looked more like the 84 win club that backed into the playoffs than the one that swept each of his first two series in October. And, th and there it is in a nutshell. When a team can skate through a couple of short series, that's fine. 
It ain't the National League Championship Series in a seven-game series. And if you're an 84-win team, eventually that's going to bubble to the surface. Your inadequacies are going to bubble to the surface. And that's what I said before this series. And I know people are going, Mike, you're going to jinx them. I I call it the way I see it. And if you can't see the difference in these two lineups, one lineup that has Tommy frickin' Pham hitting third, and the other that has Schwarber and Turner and Harper coming at you in the first inning, then I don't know what you're looking at. All right? So so there you go. Uh, it's probably, probably pretty resolute at this point. Uh, this is the post-game show. We're going to do this after every game. Um, this is going to be a four-game series. This is going to be a sweep. I can't, I can't even think of how the Phillies, even if they don't get great pitching, in their fourth game, where they may have to split it between Taiwan Walker and Christian uh, Vasquez, there is no way that the Diamondbacks can outscore the Phillies because the Diamondbacks have to throw somebody out there in game four. So I trust Ranger Suarez to give them six really good innings and the bullpen shuts them down. Arizona can't score enough runs to make this series a one-win series for them. It's going to be a four-game sweep. Darren, anything else from you? Uh, yeah, no, that's it. I, I got him. I don't know if it's going to be a sweep. I think somehow Arizona can maybe steal a game. How? Maybe steal a game. How could they know, possibly maybe. steal a game when they can't hit? When a team's up against it, you know, they do. They get a little more aggressive on a base path. I, I don't see them winning more than one, but I think if they could possibly steal a game. Okay, so you're telling four. me that this fought guy who's going to pitch game three is going to do what? Hold, hold the Phillies to, to four runs or less? No, I don't. I'm just saying. I'm just I, asking. I'm going to play along no, here. No, I think because you've got to go second-level thinking on this. It's one thing to say, yeah, you think they can win one game. Uh, my question is, how do they win a game? Tell me how the Phillies to score less than four runs against either of those two pitchers. I, they're going to have to get, again, they're going to have to get aggressive, aggressive on the base paths and hopefully small balls will let them steal a game. Small ball think- can't score enough runs to outscore the Phillies. Okay. What are we talking I about? That, so. that team, oh, small ball, is going to beat the Phillies 3-1? to one? That what? team can't beat the Phillies 3-1? to one? I All I said was I think they can steal a game, but they're not winning more than one. And I'm asking you, how do they steal a game? To I steal a game, you. they would have to outscore the Phillies. How do they do that with small ball? I think they, if they get aggressive on the base paths and do what they do well and steal bases and use small ball smartly and the manager gets his head out of his ass, they Small can ball the does not accumulate enough runs as home runs. Okay, you, you, see, you see it time and time again. That team can't. Home runs a game. You can't do that. That team can't hit home runs. They can't beat you by small ball. When your team hits home runs, small ball does not win. All right. I all hope right. I'm wrong. Oh, you're I dead wrong. Sweep. It's a damn sweep. And stop being, like, afraid. I'm not afraid. You're I'm afraid to say afraid. a sweep. You're oh. afraid to say a damn sweep. Because I you want to cover it, your ass. It's bad juju to say a sweep after a 2 nothing. Oh, bad it. juju. You know, you can take a juju. You can put juju in a pipe and smoke it right now. There's no juju <laughs> in this series. It's over. <laughs> all right. Let's go. All right. Let's get out of here. Thanks, everybody. This is a special post-game podcast of the Mike Masnelli Podcast. It's technically podcast number 124. Wednesday, October 28th, a recap of Game 2. The Phillies are up 2-0 in the series. They are just belittling an inferior team. And that is going to continue in the next two games. Certainly not coming back to Philadelphia this series. So store up your energy and wait for the World Series, no matter who the Phillies are playing. And this is the year that I think it's going to happen. This team has some kind of an aura now that I don't think can be defeated. And you see it. I see it. The national TV people see it. The pundits from all. The Phillies are downright scary to people right now. And no other team is eliciting that kind of a reaction from everybody who watches baseball. And I'm talking about the, the guys that are commentating that are have played baseball, that have been major league players. Uh, this is something special. And so savor it. Wait for the World Series. Thanks for listening and watching the Mike Missinelli podcast on Bet Rivers Network. You can get in touch with me, Mike at MikeMiss.com, and see me on Twitter at MikeMiss25. Have a great rest of the day, everybody, and uh, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.